Hello and welcome to our next migration video in the series. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to migrate a more complex application. Now, if you missed our first two videos, make sure you check them out because they'll show you what to expect before you get started and how to use code mods to migrate a very basic project from V3 to Strapi V4. In today's video, we're going to use our food advisor application as reference to learn more about how to go through the migration process as well to migrate custom code. In this video, our initial goal is to start the migration process by running code mods and making sure that we could build our application. In the following videos, we're going to take a look at how to migrate custom policies, millwares, controllers, services, and GraphQL. But that's for later videos. So let's jump right into it. Before jumping into the migrations, let's take a look at some of the resources we're going to use. Here we have how to migrate from Strapi V3 to V4 walkthrough project, which is a great overview of the initial process. So we're going to use this as a guide, making sure that we don't miss any steps. And I wrote this article to help you to use this reference when going through your migrations. Next, we have this chart. And today we're going to focus on the first initial steps of setting up a basic project, making sure that we point to a different database, using code mods to migrate the general structure and making sure that our application builds and runs correctly. It's still not going to be 100% because we're not going to talk about covering the custom code, but we are going to focus on the initial folder structure dependencies and, and the automatic process that is covered by code mods. In the next following videos, we will cover all the customizations that we have to do. For this, we're going to use the code migration guide to help us follow the steps. We are going to today look at how to update our configuration, dependencies, and our generic routes, controllers, and services. And for this demonstration, you could get the initial code from our GitHub that I will post on the description below. And we're going to use code mods for the auto migration part to make things easier for us. One thing to keep in mind, there are some changes that we are making to the code mod script. So there's a few steps that today we're going to do manually, but in the future, it will be done automatic. The first thing we're going to do is to set up our initial Strapi V3 project. So I'm going to copy this link and I'm going to clone it locally. Once this is cloned, let's CD into our project. And let's run yarn. This will download all of the necessary packages for our project. Now that it's done, let's run yarn seed to add our initial data to our database. So that way we could have a database for later when we are practicing how to do database migration from Strapi 3 to Strapi 4. Let's first run yarn build to build our admin UI. And now let's run yarn develop to start our project. Once a project starts, let's quickly create an admin user. Super secure password, monkey1234. Click let's start. And here we are. We have our Strap UV3 project with our data already here. Let's stop the server and open it in our code editor. Now, before we get too far, let's run rmrf.get. Uh, this way, we're going to make sure that we don't commit to my demo project that we started because we want to maintain it the same. And this way, you could save this to your own repo for later reference. Let's run git init. Let's add all the changes and run git commit with our message starting migration. Perfect. Once it's all safe, we are ready to continue. I'm going to go ahead and change the color so that we know that this is our V3 migration project. Next, let's set up Strapi version 4 reference project so we could use it to make it easier for us to make some of the changes. We can do so by running npm create Strapi app at latest. Let's call it reference and we'll do a quick start flag. Now, if you are using an older node version because you're running Strapi v3, let's go ahead and switch to version 16 to create our current new project. Once everything's all set, we could stop the server because we don't actually have to run the project. 
Let's CD into our reference project and open it in code. This way we could take a look at some of the file structure and use it as reference. Let me go ahead and change the color so we could make sure that we could tell the difference which project we are in. So red is for Strapi version four and green is for our current project that we are migrating. So let's take a look at our chart to see what are the initial steps that we have to take to start this migration process. So using the chart, we could see that we're going to start with our backend code migration first. The first thing we're going to do is point to a new database. Once that's done, we're going to follow the documentation, which you could find by searching migrations. And you want to click on code migration guide because that's what we're going through. And here, as we scroll a little bit, the next step that we're going to follow before running code mods is making changes in our configuration. We could learn more by clicking on the link and checking out the difference. If you missed the prior video, make sure you watch it because we covered these steps in detail, working with a simple Strapi V3 project. But we're also gonna go through this briefly in this video as well. Moving on, let's go back to our Strapi project. And the first thing we want to do is go into our temp folder. We're going to rename our database file to use later when we're practicing our database migration. So we're going to keep this for later use. So let's call it all v3 data. Perfect. Now, next, we're going to rerun yarn develop to make sure that we generate a new DB file. We created a new database. We don't need to log into our application, but just know that whenever you're doing your migration, you're not number one pointing to production. And number two, you are using a totally different database when going through these steps. You will only focus on data migration when you finish your code migration steps first. Now we're going to go ahead and update our configuration folder. We could use our documentation as reference. So looking here inside our code migration guide, scrolling down to configurations, and here we could see the example of all the changes from Strapi 3 to Strapi 4 and which files we need. We could easily see what the files are by taking a look in our reference project, opening the config and seeing the admin file, the changes, our API file, our database, and in our case, we're using SQLite, our middlewares, and our servers. So let's go ahead and make these changes now. Looking in our v3 project, we're going to take a look. And the first thing we see here is functions. This no longer exists. So we could go ahead and delete it. Policies, we have our history policy, which we'll keep here for now. But eventually we're going to refactor this into a strapi4 policy instead. Now let's create a new file called admin.js. Let's go ahead and copy this from our reference project. Next, we want to create this api.js file. Let's go ahead and paste that code in. Next, we have our database. Let's go ahead and make sure that we grab this example that allows us to connect to our SQL Lite database. And in databases, let's paste these changes. Next, we have our middlewares. Let's go ahead and copy and paste this and paste it inside our Strapi v3 project. And finally, let's take a look at our server.js file and copy this. Perfect, so this part is done. And for more references, you could check this out in our documentation. You could click on any one of the options to see more about the changes and the differences between of how it was done in version three and how it is implemented in version four. Back in our Strapi V3 project, we gone ahead and we updated all of our dependency structures. So what we're going to do now is save the changes. Let's run git add. Let's do git commit message updated config folder structure. And now we're ready for the next step, which is running code mods.
By the way, if you want to have a great reference or you're not sure which step you're on, that is the reason why I created this how to migrate from Strap v 3 to v4 walkthrough. It covers the basic steps that you have to take when going through the steps. We started with our backend migration. We pointed to our new database. We went ahead and migrated our configuration. So next step is to use code mods. And using this article, you could scroll to the particular section and get more details how to do this. And I created this especially for you to have as reference to be able to use whenever you're going through the migration process. So let's pause here, not to make this video long. Let's take a break and come back next video to do the rest. So in this video, we set up our Strappy Food Advisor V3 project. We updated our config files, and we started the migration process. So in the next video, we're going to talk about how to use code mods, how to update dependencies, and we'll also talk about updating controllers, routes, and services. But with that being said, I'll see you all in the next video. Make sure to check out the previous videos if you haven't. And remember, if you have any questions, go join us on Discord. It's a lot of fun. We actually have a designated channel just for the migration and everybody's super awesome. A lot of fun all around. So with that being said, I'll see you next time.